So what does it mean to shut down OT systems due to a cyber attack? And generally, it means a loss of revenue for the organization. But as we saw in the Colonial Pipeline attack, it can actually cripple essential infrastructure and disrupt critical supplies to public organizations, private organizations, and just regular people. All right. Hey, everybody. I'm Brad Bussey, Chief Information Security Officer here at E360. Thank you for joining me for the State of Enterprise IT Security Edition. This is the show that makes IT security approachable and actionable for technology leaders. I'm happy to bring you three topics this week. The first, how Credo AI is empowering enterprises to manage risks of generative AI. Second, one in four organizations shut down OT operations due to cyber attacks. And three, Atlassian patches critical vulnerability in Bamboo data center and server. So with that, let's get started. So first one for today, how Credo AI is empowering enterprises to manage the risks of generative AI. As many organizations hurry to pilot and implement Gen AI tools, CIOs and CISOs are worried about how we're going to monitor and measure our products and systems for things like bias, security gaps, lack of compliance with company or industry policies and regulations, not to mention data governance, making sure what we give the Gen AI access to in the first place is actually appropriate. Now, I'm not getting paid to endorse Credo AI, but I think it's important to talk a little bit about some uh, of these in the industry. Now, Credo recently landed on the world's 50 most innovative companies list. And why is that significant? It's because Credo AI is tackling the AI governance issue head on and has designed a cloud-based tool to manage risks of Gen AI tools against things like data leakage, toxic outputs, and security vulnerabilities. The company's founder comes out of the Microsoft AI division and has what I like to call experience on ground when it comes to securing AI. And one of the things that, sh that stuck with me that she said is there's actually a, a kind of a sad narrative where governance has become a mechanism by which innovation slows down. But with AI and its speed and scale, done correctly, we can actually go really fast. So this is why I recommend organizations take the measure twice and cut once approach. So start with data governance, then move to AI governance before you make a tool selection or you know, really allow that rampant use of AI in your organization. But if the, as I say, horse is already out of the barn and the use of AI has already spiraled out of control, adopt a control point or browser extension. And that's going to help you at least stop the spread of company data into the wild. Second topic for today, one in four organizations shut down OT operations due to cyber attacks. Now, as a primer, I know most of you probably know what OT is, but just as a review, OT is operational technology, and it refers to hardware, software, and this typically monitors and controls devices, processes, and infrastructure, and it's generally in an industrial setting. Think SCADA systems, transportation systems, things like that. Think of OT being used to detect 
or cause changes in physical systems like industrial equipment. And I look at OT as being a combination of technologies involving the network, information processing, enterprise data centers, and in some cases, cloud systems. So what does it mean to shut down OT systems due to a cyber attack? And generally, it means a loss of revenue for the organization. But as we saw in the Colonial Pipeline attack, it can actually cripple essential infrastructure and disrupt critical supplies to public organizations, private organizations, and just regular people. And a shutdown can damage an organization's reputation uh, just from that, that whole standpoint of you know, a sophisticated attack. Being able to do something additionally, which is cause physical damage to equipment, like what we observed during Stuxnet. Basically, nuclear stuff spinning too fast or slow. And it's, I, I think of it as like a, a Goldilocks scenario. If it's not just right, something gets eaten. IT systems are generally the most vulnerable and account for the largest portion of an organization's attack surface. But as we become more connected, OT systems, they're now the target for attackers and compromises of those systems are on the rise. So with attacks on the rise, what can we actually do about it? Five things I think about that we could do to secure OT includes things like have a network map and do a connectivity analysis and make sure you have robust security controls and make sure that access to those OT systems is secured. And it's still a manual process in a lot of ways. And sometimes that's okay. Uh, second, detection of suspicious activities. Make sure you understand the exposures, what that surface looks like. Uh, could a malware attack break out? What does that look like? And what I call this is continuous monitoring, which feeds the third thing, which is implementing a zero trust framework. You've heard me talk about that before. I think it's definitely important. Next is aligning the right remote access controls and tools, and then controlling identity and access management. And I'll give you a bonus one as well, which is having an IR plan with a resilient backup and recovery strategy. Now, third topic for today, Atlassian patches critical vulnerability in Bamboo Data Center and server. Now, Atlassian last week announced patches for, I think it was something like two dozen vulnerabilities in Bamboo, Bitbucket, Confluence, and Jira products. And there's a critical severity bug that could be exploited, again, without user interaction. And these are, these are pretty important and, and a pretty big one. So I'm only going to give you what I consider that, you know, 10 out of 10 CVSS score. And if you want to look it up, it's CVE 2024-1597. And it's a SQL injection issue. And there's a, a critical flaw that does impact a, think of it as like a third party dependency of the Bamboo data center and server. So, According to Atlassian, uh, the issue could allow an unauthenticated attacker to expose assets in your environment. Now, you're asking, why is this important? Honestly, because so many of our clients and listeners are customers of Atlassian, whether it's Bitbucket, Con Confluence, Jira, uh, all of those have updates as well. And I know many of you do leverage the platform. So if you haven't patched yet, I urge you to do that today. Now, I thought I'd do something a little bit different on the show today. And I end up spending a lot of time talking with the 
augmented intelligence out there today, whether it's chat GPT, Gemini, or, you know, just any of the others. Uh, so I, I was interested in what all of them would say about how would you recommend I, as a CISO, secure my organization and prevent users from putting company information or PII into a generative AI? And I asked the same question of three of the popular Gen AIs. And again, they don't pay me, so I'm not going to tell you which ones. And then I captured the output. And then I asked another augmented intelligence to summarize the output. And what I got back was pretty interesting. And honestly, I found it pretty good high level advice. And I'm sure you're wondering, well, well how did that turn out? So I'll give you six of the top things that the AI suggest to protect yourself from them. Now, the first one, develop clear policies and procedures. This includes things like data handling, a privacy policy, and making sure that you use external tools. And this is to establish clear guidelines on the use of external software and services. Good advice. Second one, implement technical controls. And you hear me talk about data all the time and data governance, and the AI suggests the same thing. Data loss prevention, making sure you implement a solution to monitor, detect, and then block sensitive info from leaving your network. Having network monitoring and endpoint security, having things like application whitelisting, all good things. Third, educate and train employees. So we, we've said this before, awareness training is key because at the end of the day, most of the breaches happen from the user perspective. Whether they get fished, whether they click something that they shouldn't, take some somewhere, whether they give credentials to something, that's still 80% of attacks. So making sure you educate and train employees is, is definitely top of mind. Number four, monitor and audit. So that's doing regular audits, and this could be uh, data usage, application access logs, and looking for anything that attempts to exfil sensitive data. So it kind of ties in with one of the previous ones. Uh, number five, legal and compliance measures. So this often gets missed, I've found, just in, in most organizations, and it's not even having to do with AI most of the time. It's just reviewing contracts and agreements and making sure that the high-level things that you would need from a legal standpoint for AI are, are in there. And then making sure we do things like data anonymization, and that's a big thing from data governance overall is making sure that if the data did happen to get out, uh, it's anonymous. And I always like to say encrypted, which leads right into number six, use encrypted communication channels. So I would take this one step further. We're not just wanting to secure the communication, but anytime we can, we want to make sure that data can only be read by the intended recipient. And putting a time box around it doesn't hurt either. So the, the AI ended up saying, by taking a comprehensive approach that includes policy development, technical measures, employee education, and regular monitoring, you can significantly reduce the risk of sensitive company information or PII being misused in generative AI platforms. Not bad, right? So thank you for joining me, and I look forward to the next time on the State of Enterprise IT Security Edition.